Hey guys, it's Irish again. Uh, it's coming back again with the i3 window manager series. In the first video, I just showed you just the basic functionality and just a, a brief tour of around the i3 frame. I, I thought that uh, this video should just be um, entirely on the configuration file. It is nicely and nicely simply laid out and it doesn't take uh, much knowledge of programming languages um, to understand it. So let's just open up the configuration. So I'm going to use gedit this time. Usually I'm a vim person, but uh, for the purposes of this video I thought I would just, you know, make it bigger. So it's under its own thing once you install it. Uh, it goes i3 slash config type in my password really fast and then here you go this is the entire configuration of the i3 window manager this is simply laid out I have you know tried Xmonad which is written in Haskell I've tried awesome window manager and that's written in Lua and those can be a little confusing to, to, to go around. So I'm just going to try to go line by line just to explain what each of these lines actually means. But again, it is written out plain and simple. So the first line that's uncommented uh, is to set my mod key. My mod key, by, uh, i3's mod key by default is the Windows key or the super key. So that would be a mod 4. But you can change it, like I have, to the Alt key, which would be mod 1. So instead of having the Windows key, which I only, on my current keyboard, only have one Windows key, it just doesn't work for me to have the Windows key as my mod. So I have two Alt keys, so that makes it so much simpler to do any of the combinations to opening Windows, resizing all that stuff so that's what this is the second line here is when I showed you guys how to float a window this showed you how to control the float the floating window so you just click on your mod key and then you could drag it with your mouse so that's what that that means so floating modifier this one is to set your terminal. Now you can have any terminal that you want. So you can have console from KDE. You can have the GNOME, the MATE, Terminus. You can have XFCE terminal. You can have any one terminal to do this. Or Tmux or again, any terminal that you can think of. I personally am a fan of uh, RxVT Unicode. So that's what this is. And then it just binds the system to the mod key plus return. And then this executes the no startup uh, and then the terminal. So on boot up, you can see a little like hourglass spinning um, icon. It's supposed to eliminate it, but again, I personally haven't been able to get rid of that. It is quite annoying, but I've learned to live with it. Uh, the second one is the focus or to kill the focus window. So on the screen right here, if I did mod shift Q, it would kill this window. So let me open up another uh, another screen. So like in my previous video, if I did alt shift Q, it would just kill that screen. So the next one is, this, okay, the D menu is the program launcher as indicated here. So this is the program launcher since it does not have an application launcher and this just shows the bind system mod D and then it executes the running of the D menu. So if I click mod which is the alt button D right up on top it shows the D menu. So again you can change the D into something else. I can have it as an R, as a T, as a P, any, any character that you can think of on the keyboard you can set it to that as long as it doesn't conflict with anything else in there so to change the focus I forgot to mention 
uh, in the previous one. I saved it to, so I can show it to you on this one. You can move around your system without leaving the keyboard. So if you wanted, if you had multiple screens open again, and you just wanted to do move left and right, so it would be the J and the, and the semicolon to move left and right. So J is left, semicolon is right. And then if I had two bottom panels, so again, it's the Alt key, J to move left, semicolon to move right, and then it just moves over. So if I did the, the K, it would move down, and if I did the L, it would move up. But I personally don't use the homeroom keys. I like to do the arrow keys, which is just simpler that way, but I'm going to try to use that home keys more often because they're used in Vim also. So that is what that is. And then it's the same thing. You can move different applications from if you had like the four points that I usually have in my config file. So say I had Ranger, which is a shows all my stuff in here. Or say I have Glances, which is a uh, like H top, so it just uh, monitors your your stuff. Say Mock, which is a music player, and then WeChat, which is my IRC chat channel. But say I don't want the IRC channel down here, I can do Alt, Shift, and then Up. And then I can move it to anywhere I want on this system here. And again, if I wanted uh, glances the same way, I can just move it down, move it over, do whatever I want to do with it. So that's what that is. Now again, in my previous video, I also mentioned the split, the splitting of the of the of uh, the screen, and this is where that key combination is. So V for vertical, even though it is horizontal that you're splitting. And then again, I could change these two, but I've learned to adjust the way that I do it. So I usually just leave it alone. But I could change this to my liking, and you guys can also too. And right now I'm also in full screen mode. So that's what this is. So it's the bind system, your mod key, and then F for full screen. So if I wanted to get out, I would just press mod F. And then that's what that is. And then the previous video I showed you the stacking. Again, you don't have to have stacking. W for tab, you can have T for tab, and then you can go back to E. And then this is the floating mode that I showed you. So you're going your mod key, shift, and then space, and then that will go immediately into floating mode. If I can get it to go, there it is. And then if I hold mod and then the arrow, I do that. So that's what that is for. Again, these are all configurable. One aspect of, uh, I will link a video into the description of what the difference is between the parent and the child container. But I can just do a brief description of what it is. This video is done by the one of the developers of the i3, and he does a fabulous job of explaining all of this but from my knowledge right here in the main screen is what is known as the parent so if I do opened up a terminal I just produced a child this looks like a, if you've ever seen a family tree it looks like a family tree so if I do another one horizontal that's another child and then if I go vertical that child had its own child and then the same thing that child has its own child 
So it, again, it does look like a tree form. To describe again, the video that I'll uh, put in the description does a better job at explaining that than I did, but um, but that is just the general gist of it. So to focus the parent, so if I had a whole bunch of them together, I can focus all of them, and then I can do a different. Um, layout or configuration or something like that. So now on to the workspaces. So by default the workspaces just show 1 through 10. Right here is my themes. I have the awesome theme so I can have these icons in. So this is for my web browser, my terminal, my email, my uh, my folder and then Steam. But again, I could have it uh, in a different terminal like this or a different one. So if I wanted the mail to, to be down in, say, number 9, copy, paste, save that. And then if I go out and go to 9, if you look down at the bottom, you can see now I have two of those. So that's what that is. So you can change it to actually say words or pictures or anything else like that. It's just uh, it just makes it nicer, I believe, than the basic uh, thing. And then again, the same the focus containers. If I can move what you see here, actually let me try doing that here. So if I wanted to move this to say. Um, workspace 5. I go to there, this stays here, and now this is on number 5. So you can move any uh, any applications over to a new workspace that you want. Keep scrolling down here. Now this is just a thing that I found on the i3 website. This can do only, pick, you can have the normal uh, normal um, borders to the window. You can have one pixel, which is what this is. You can see the blue box. And then I can have no pixels by doing Alt-U. And now it just looks just like a screen. But if I wanted the box, like a regular um, box that you would see on a desktop environment, then I prefer personally like this. So if I go back between the fourth, I know which, uh, you know, what screen I'm on, what application I'm on. That just makes it so much simpler than trying to figure it out. So if I wanted to move this back to number two, how I had it, I just do that, and then it goes right back into here. Now this right here, by the, this just tells you you can put in a executable file into your path and then all you would have to do is click on your mod F2 and if you do that uh, if I do that you can see on the bottom if I press the L key it would lock my system it would log out suspend hibernate reboot and I can shut down without this little hack you would have to go into your terminal and type, you know, sudo power off or sudo reboot or lock off or something like that. So this makes it so much simpler, which I feel, which is easier. Now to reload the configuration file, you just do mod shift C. But if you wanted to reboot or, you know, uh, restart the session, so if, say you, I made any changes to this configuration file, I would just do mod shift R and it would restart the configs with how I have it set up. So that's what that looks like. So if, and then exiting, if you did not have this here, you can exit by doing mod shift E and then it will just, you, it will, uh, let me show you what that looks like. So if I did mod shift E, you can just hit exit the shortcut and it would go back to your display manager or your login screen or if you even have a login screen. Uh, I personally do not. 
let's uh, keep moving down here and then you can again this is the resize so if you press the shrink the width again you can use either the home row keys which is the J K L and semicolon or you can use the arrow keys which is left down right and up if you want and then uh, again uh, if you have also installed or pulse audio or whatever your volume control is again this is another uh, uh, feature that you can have so you don't have to go into you know the icon down here and then just right click go to open mixer and then do the volume that way it's just a, it's just a hassle so what this does is I just do mod F11 which is my uh, decrease my volume on my keyboard and let me show you what that is if you look right here if I do mod F11 it will shrink down my volume keys same thing with the brightness right here is my backlight so if I do alt F4 you can see the screen going brighter or darker and then finally we get to this bar right here so the bar so right here as I explained before is the i3 status bar which as you could see here however you can configure Conkey uh, to you know be piped into this bar and you can use Conkey instead of the i3 status I, I have unfortunately unable been unable to figure that out but I am in the process of that I can have the position instead of down below I can have it on top so if I just say top save it restart this it's right here up on top but again this is preferable taste this is my taste I like it on the bottom And then if I wanted to not have any of these tray icons here, I can hide them. Let me undo that, save, restart, and then they're gone. So they're not in your way or anything else like that. But again, I personally have them viewed so I can see, uh, so I can easily, if I move from one location to another, I can easily go and do, uh, you know, connect into that Wi-Fi and I can hide this bottom bar also that this is what this is right here uh, sorry right here so mod and hide if I wanted to do this and then restart now as you can see there is no bottom bar so it just looks like a wallpaper but if you do your Windows key and your alt and your mod key or your alt key it will pop up on the bottom here so again I, more real estate for you for your applications but again personally I sometimes use it uh, just to mess if I go out and I just want to impress my friends I just use that and they're like well what are you hacking and stuff like that and in the background again it's uh, I can change this color to whatever I want same thing with the status line and the separators you can't see it but each one of these are separated by a bar and then also these also but I personally don't like that it doesn't look right to me and then my active so my focused workspace as I show you here it's the border the back and then the text so this is my text the back is black so anytime I have a focused uh, workstation it highlights in this light blue and all the other ones the active which uh, are the inactive just don't have anything like this and then if I click on a um, a link in my IRC client this one of these or whichever you have your your web browser on will turn red so that's what that looks like and then finally my startup apps so I have nitrogen to set my wallpaper and then to restore that and then my 
Network Manager applet, which right here, which is right here, my volume icon, which is my speaker, which is right there, and then Dropbox, and then Compton. So say you have GDM or you're coming from GNOME. For whatever reason, it does not like your uh, it just doesn't show Compton if you have GDM so you just have to pipe it in as the background and it would you know your transparency will come up the same thing with uncloud so I'm showing you the Dropbox so there comes the Dropbox and then the uncloud which is D you should see that popping up here shortly yep, there it is so that's what uh, the startup apps again there you can change there is a different way to, to, to do the startup apps but I find this the simplest and again you can change whatever color you, that you want right here so that is the main configuration file but say you wanted to have you wanted to, to display anything on here so it is the i3 status so it is sudo G it again just so I can show it to you guys and then it's it's in your home directory dot i3 status dot conf put in my password here and then again nice and simply laid out so the colors are true so I can have green as my good color and then degraded and then bad I can have different colors so you can show your IPv6, your how much disk space is left, your DHCP, uh, see if you're connected to a VPN. This is my wireless, uh, so that's what the green is right here. Your Ethernet, if you have, uh, if you're plugged into your Ethernet, battery, CPU usage, volume master, your load time, and your time zone. So in my uh, wireless right here I have again this is part of the awesome and then with a the wireless this is what it comes by default so this does show your IP address your the quality and then uh, all the all the other junk again same thing here you can change this the battery it comes not like this but it just shows your status and then your percentage DHCP this is where it's located in there your VPN once again your time zone it doesn't come with this calendar it just comes with the month date year which actually it does come by default with year month date but again you can change this you can do uh, different stuff like that then your disk the free how much is free in your your root and then your CPU usage just so the usage and then the volume. You can show your your uh, how you know how hot your CPU is, but um, it's in Celsius. I'm unable to get it to Fahrenheit, and when I see a hundred and or fifty or sixty Celsius, I get freaked out and thinking it's you know it should be a lot higher, a lot lower, something like that. So this is what the i3 status is. But again, you don't have to use the i3 status. You can use the XMO bar. You can use Conky. There's other stuff that you can use. Uh, there's a whole list of other bars and trays that you can use besides the i3 status. But to be honest, I did not change much in my config. Those are pretty close to the default. So that is just a look at the configuration file. Uh, if you guys are interested, I can show you how to more in depth on how to go from a basic, uh, basic uh, config uh, straight out of the box i3 install to what you see here, or maybe just a little bit more. Um, but I can show you how to install it, how to get all the applications that you need from an Ubuntu 14.04 installation and then how to get it to here and then if you actually one more thing before I go I just want to show you I have been running this computer with 
Firefox, Mumble, uh, VLC, a whole bunch of stuff like that. And if you look here, I've only used 651 megabytes. So I have a desktop computer with GNOME running in my other room, and it is well above a gig. So that just tells you, and as you can see, my uptime. Uh, let me see, where's my uptime? Uptime is 32 minutes. So it's not going to, you know, raise that much. But uh, if you guys like this video, just uh, give it a thumbs up or make a comment, any suggestions that you have. And uh, thank you for watching.